Now, for more on the cost of health care and other factors in the U.S. midterm elections, I'm joined by Hadley Heath Manning, Director of Health Policy at Indo uh, Independent Women's Forum. Welcome to Biz Asia America. Great to have you here. We just rattled off some of the numbers on how expensive health care in the U.S., so let me start with that. Why is the health care system in the U.S. so expensive for people to access? Well, there are a couple reasons, I would say, Phil. And, and first of all, we also have to consider, in light of those international numbers, what people are getting in exchange for their health care dollars. So in the United States, we also might top the list of cancer survival rates, and we might also get more individualized and personal care. So the quality of health care in the United States is very high. But I would still argue that we're paying too much, and that is uh, because we have a very complicated third-party payment system that includes health insurance companies and many times employers who are making health insurance decisions on behalf of their employees. So we don't have a real free or individualized market in health insurance. Um, instead, what we have are limited choices uh, for people that don't often fit their individual health care needs. Speaking of choices, President Obama gave us a new choice not too long ago. We call it Obamacare. Some people call it the Affordable Care Act, which is actually its official name. Now, did it work as in intended? Because it was supposed to give access to the health care system to millions who did not have access. A lot of folks on both sides of the argue would uh, argue about this. So I'm curious your opinion whether or not it worked. Well, there are certainly big changes in health insurance markets as a result of the Affordable Care Act. On the one hand, we have uh, millions of people signing up for new types of plans that are available in the exchanges in various states. On the other hand, we have people who have lost insurance coverage because their previous plans didn't meet the qualifications or requirements of the Affordable Care Act. In some states, Medicaid has been expanded and millions of people are being added to the Medicaid rolls. But then there's the question of whether or not those new enrollments in Medicaid represent people who are previously uninsured or people who are being shifted off of some kind of private health insurance or employer-sponsored plan into the Medicaid plan. So the costs and the benefits of the law are very difficult to weigh. It depends on which metrics you focus on. It depends on if you're looking at the labor market effects or the effects on our national budget. Um, but individually, Americans at home are certainly going to be weighing the impact on themselves and their families as they consider the way forward for health policy. Some would say the reason why it wasn't more successful is because there weren't enough doctors and nurses and the system itself, the structural system itself, wasn't prepared for the influx of potentially these all these millions of new patients. I, I'm wondering how you feel about that. No, I think that's definitely part of the problem because what we have in the United States, we have a, a serious and significant health care market and we also have health insurance. And what the goal of the Affordable Care Act was is to expand health insurance coverage. But health care depends very much on the supply of providers, treatments, and services available to people. And health insurance often increases people's demand for those services. So if we expand insurance coverage, we have increased demand for health care services. And if we don't overnight also increase the supply in our health care system, there is a mismatch. And health insurance companies are responding to this largely by limiting the doctor and provider networks that are available in many of the new plans uh, under the Affordable Care Act. These are called narrow network plans or ultra narrow network plans. So in order to provide the new benefits that are required under the law, on the back end, health insurance companies are having to compensate uh, by reducing the number of doctors and providers those new enrollees are able to see. I want to squeeze two quick questions in. So help me out here. If the Republicans get a hold of the Senate, and let's not even talk about 2016 yet, but could the Affordable Care Act be in jeopardy of being reversed? I believe so. Not only is a reversal a possible outcome, but there could be significant and serious changes made to the law to make it more market friendly, to open up the options that are available to consumers, to focus on bending the cost curve down um, by individualizing the choices in health insurance. And hopefully one day we could work towards a system that wasn't centered on employer-sponsored coverage. We could repeal the employer mandates in the Affordable Care Act and move towards a system where individuals could buy health insurance in an individualized market. So I'm going to throw out some acronyms in here for our viewers. I apologize, but the Government Accounting uh, Office and also the CBO, which is the Cong Cong Congressional Budget Office, they both have two very different numbers on what the Affordable Care Act is going to cost Americans. I've seen one number, which is very little, and the other number is as high as $6 trillion. Is the truth somewhere in the middle, or are, are we so far off we have no idea what this is going to cost yet because it's still too new? 
Right, well, the Government Accountability Office projection for Obamacare or the Affordable Care Act's impact on the deficits was a 75-year window, and that's how they came to the $6.2 trillion that they expect the Affordable Care Act could add to our long-term deficits. And on the other hand, the Congressional Budget Office typically only scores the budgetary impact of a law in a 10-year window. So it could make a very big difference depending on the timetable that we're looking at and also depending on how the law is actually implemented because these government scoring agencies count on the government to follow the letter of the law and they count on the economy to behave in a certain way as well. But if anything changes with employment levels, uh, that affects the revenues in the law and if anything changes in terms of health care costs, that can affect the costs of the law as well. All right. Hadley Heath Manning, Director of Health Policy, Independent Women's Forum, thank you very much uh, for your insights on this very important topic.